well, 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 well. How is everyone? I hope everyone is fine. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, boy. So I guess we'll uh, get right into this. I'm Black Dragon, and welcome to Black Dragon Biker TV. And as always, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in from wherever it is that you are and happen to be in the entire world. Uh, we are here live on Facebook, and we are live on Instagram, and uh, we are live on uh, YouTube, and we are live on the Dragon's Lair Motorcycle Chaos, wherever you get your podcasts, so you can get us on Spotify and YouTube and uh, iTunes and all those places. Right now, and we're going to talk about a very sad subject for me, um, really kind of uh, broke my heart to hear this one, but uh, I guess this is um, this is going to be one of those things that happens to all of us eventually, uh, sooner or later, unless somebody comes up with an elixir that um, will prevent uh, us from meeting our makers or with the... Uh, if we don't get some sort of elixir, then uh, this is going to happen to all of us. And that is uh, the passing of uh, Toby Jean Livingston, Levingston rather, who um, is um, the founder and lifelong president of the Mighty East Bay Dragons Motorcycle Club Nation. And... I just want to start off with giving my personal condolences to the Mighty East Bay Dragons. Established in 1959, they have set the path f for black motorcycling in the United States of America, for black motorcycle clubs on the black motorcycle set. If you wanted to know how to get down, especially if you were from California, you just looked up north towards Oakland. And we spent a lot of time there. Our, our club was established uh, in 72. We got our clubhouse in 74. So these guys were around, you know, a long time before we were. And they were like big brothers. They were larger. They are larger than life. And legendary among them uh, was Toby Dean Livingston. And his book that we will get around to here in a few minutes talks about the, the troubles that they had, talks about uh, their challenges, things that they had to face to get their MC up and running, things they had to go through in terms of people telling them uh, what they could and couldn't do and uh, who was going to pol patch police them they they went through it all but they uh, remained a hell of a force and the lifelong president now I've only, only I've only known one lifelong president and that's this man here anyone someone that could actually hold it together <laughs> since 1959 and remain the president. It just speaks volumes for what kind of individual, what kind of person, what kind of leader he was. So we're going to talk about this a little bit. This will be a lesson for some of you, especially some of you that uh, don't know a whole lot about black motorcycle clubs and where we come from and the kinds of things that our heroes have done. So we'll start a little bit um, talking about a little bit of the history of the East Bay Dragons. A motorcycle club from uh, Oakland, as I said, started in 1959. It was one of the first all-black motorcycle clubs. The club was originally started as a car club by Toby Jean Livingston, Levingston, I always, I've always said his name incorrectly, Toby Jean Levingston, uh, who wrote the book Soul on Bikes, 
the East Bay Dragons MC and the Black Biker set, along with Keith and Kent Zimmerman. The uh, club was recognized by the city council, by a city council proclamation, which is kind of interesting because they kind of got to start like uh, most of us. They started off as um, a car club and they weren't really too, too well liked by the city. Uh, in a little bit of trouble here and there to be recognized by the city on January 8th of 2014 and a proclamation that read the East Bay Dragons Motorcycle Club when dealing with a community often battling negativity and violence have remained a symbol of positivity, community activism, and pride within Oakland and with the African American community. These men were larger than life. And I watched, I watched them. I kind of grew up watching their get down and, and uh, you know, as a young biker. But we would go up there and spend time. And they started, you know, uh, during the t crisis times, uh, integration and stuff like that, they started as a car club. And they later switched to motorcycles. And in this little video, he, he talked about, this is Toby Jean right See, here. See, when I had a problem at home, my bills I couldn't pay, or my money I couldn't, I didn't have no money to pay my bills with. And then I had a lot of problems with my kids or something that went on in my family that I couldn't solve. Then I got up on my damn motorcycle. He talked about, like for the rest of us, how his motorcycle was the problem solver. When he had problems and he couldn't... Um, really figure out how he wanted to deal with them. He talked about how the motorcycle was his problem solver. And I think that's the same for all of us. So let's just uh, dig into for a little bit. Let's just dig into their history. Just so you can know the history of the man behind the legend and the history behind his club. So. The East Bay Dragons is an all-male motorcycle club, an all-male African-American motorcycle club, all black, all Harley Davidson riding motorcycle club, founded in Oakland, California, as I said, in 1959 by founder and lifelong president, Toby Jean Livingston. And uh, it's kind of interesting that they would be a, a Harley riding motorcycle club, but we'll talk about that. So that, let's talk about them first as a car club. Livingston founded the car club shortly after arriving in Oakland uh, in 1955 with the intent of providing an outlet to his younger brother and friends to get them off the rough streets uh, of Oakland. The car club uh, did not adopt the official name Dragon's Car Club until about 1958. The words East Bay were added by a member by the name of Joe Lewis, signifying their region of origin by 1959. The East Bay Dragons had developed a reputation among Oakland P Police Department for their numerous melees and brawls with local street gangs from East and West Oakland. The turning point for the car club came following an incident at a local party at the uh, Snow Building, a rented hall by the Oakland Zoo adjacent to the Grass Valley neighborhood of the Oakland Hills. A fight broke out and one of the members drove his car through the front door of the building onto the dance floor. After constant harassment and profiling from the local police, Levingston had considered disbanding the car club. You know, he started the car club to stay out of trouble. And uh, he had uh, considered disbanding it. But a longtime friend, Sonny Barger, you guys know Sonny Barger, the founder of the uh, Hells Angels, suggested he would switch the club, he should switch the club from a car club to a motorcycle club because bikes were more discreet than cars, easier to maintain, cheaper to work on, and as Toby Dean Livingston said in an interview that I saw, you would have problems trying to get the family car. You know, you had one car and you want to go hang out with the fellas in, the, in a car club on a, on a Saturday or a Sunday, 
and maybe the wife needs the car or the family needs the car. So sometimes you'd have a problem getting the car. But motorcycles were cheap. You could get your motorcycle and be on your motorcycle and the family would still have the car. So it made a lot of sense. So after following Barger's recommendation, the East Bay Dragons officially became a motorcycle club in 1959. In addition to trouble with the Oakland Police Department at that time, the idea of sustaining a car club became difficult. Many working class and working poor black families could not afford more than one car per household, and Dragon's members were no exception. Many club members could have access to the only one car, you know, deal with the uh, weekends and late nights. Motorcycles were more practical because they were not dependent on by the entire household. In 1959 and even well into the 60s, although there were two Harley-Davidson dealerships in Oakland, and you guys have heard me say this before, this, this won't be new, but although there were two Harley-Davidson dealerships in Oakland, no dealerships in the Bay Area would sell bikes to black customers. You guys have heard me say that. And that was in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. It was a long time where you'd go down there and they'd say, no, we, we, uh, we, we don't have a bike for you. Black folks weren't supposed to be riding Harleys. So all of the original founding members had to buy used bikes which was far more affordable as a new bike, uh, as a new bikes cost around $500, but a used Harley could be bought for as little as $30, especially a broken up one that you could fix up that would be under somebody's house or in somebody's garage or attic or something. You could get those bikes cheap and work on them, and now you got a bike that's moving. Prior to the East Bay Dragons, the only other black outlaw motorcycle club in the Bay Area were the now defunct Fillmore-based Frisco Rattlers. Although the Chosen Few Motorcycle Club and the Los Angeles Defiant Ones Motorcycle Club, uh, or rather along with the Chosen Few Motorcycle Club and the Los Angeles Defiant Ones Motorcycle Club. The East Bay Dragons are one of the oldest surviving predominantly black motorcycle clubs founded in California. The LA Defiant Ones were founded two years earlier in 1957. The East Bay Dragons, LA Defiant Ones, and Outcast Motorcycle Club founded in 1969 are the oldest surviving all black, by bl all black, only black members. The Children Few Motorcycle Club uh, has always been um, integrated, like the Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club. But uh, the older surviving all, all black motorcycle clubs are East Bay Dragons, LA Defiant Ones, and Outcast Motorcycle Club. Um, and these, these, these clubs also require their members to ride American-made steel. So uh, community involvement. The East Bay Dragons uh, were involved with the Black Panthers, uh, and um, sometimes they were mistaken for each other by law enforcement. In the spring of 1967, East Bay Dragons member Joe Lewis opened up Papa Joe's Soul Food, a few short blocks from the clubhouse. The Black Panthers' earliest headquarters was just a few blocks from the Dragons' clubhouse. Founders Huey Newton and Bobby Seal and Chief of Staff David Hillard often came in and ate at Joe's restaurant. The East Bay Dragons had already established a strong presence within the communities in East Oakland during the initial phases of the creation of the Black Panthers. Newton and Seal approached the East Bay Dragons for ideas and support back in the day. When Huey P. Newton went to jail for the 1967 shootout between the Oakland Cops and the Panthers, many members of the Dragons attended free Huey rallies at D. Fremery Park. A lot of members attended weekend rallies to show off their bikes and to listen to speeches given by prominent Black Power Movement leaders of the day. Due to the support both organizations had for each other, some of the Black Panthers eventually became members of the East Bay Dragons after the Black Panthers disbanded. When we talk about community service, the East Bay Dragons have a record of service to the community, uh, as we saw in the letter from, from the uh, City Council, and have supported many local charitable organizations, including Riding for Breast Cancer, AIDS Awareness, and Violence Awareness. Every Labor Day weekend, and this is, this is legendary, their, their Labor Day weekend, uh, they they would always, they have always hosted an annual black party 
in, in September at their clubhouse and used the proceeds to donate school supplies and gift certificates to families of East Oakland to purchase children's school clothes and supplies. Every November they hold an annual turkey drive for Thanksgiving, providing turkeys and other food staples for families in need during the Christmas season. They sponsor a toy drive to uh, deliver toys to Oakland children and on their bikes, on their motorcycles, while dressing up as Santa Claus. You know, uh, and I will say this about uh, that party, something you guys don't know. Those of you have, who have watched Biker Boys, and that's kind of like a, um, uh, a cult kind of uh, f a movie for, for black bikers. When we created the scenes of the big party at the, the big kind of show at the racetrack, if you guys remember that, it was really based on two clubs. It was based on the halfway run, and it was based on the run to um, uh, the East Bay Dragons. It kind of had both of those things merged in. Uh, we were trying to, to show that, and that is where the inspiration came from. It was really, um, really kind of um, cool to to be able to be in on that, and we were we were referencing these clubs, the Chosen Few, and the East Bay Dragons in that movie, uh, and, and all of the fun and the great things that they did. And I spent so much time, so many, uh, so I, I went up there so many times for that celebration. I learned cool things and. I remember meeting him. I, I remember, I remember him laughing at me when I dropped my bike in the slow run. I thought I was such a incredible motorcycle rider until we had the slow race. And you had this race where uh, this girl would stand on the back of your motorcycle and you're driving like a half a mile an hour, and she'd have her hands behind her back and she would have to take the hot dog off of the uh, a stream with the hot dog. Uh, and you would have to go slow enough, and, and that was kind of like a, it was just amazing. Uh, and I would watch the OGs, uh, be, I, so I was going, I went there as a prospect. You know, one of the things that you, you had to do was you, you had to go up there and, and uh, meet the East Bay Dragons. This was, this was a real thing. These guys were uh, something else. They, they, they were just larger than life. They all had these, um, um, Badass motorcycles. They like like uh, Black Sabbath. My club. We started out really uh, on race bikes. We well in the old days when they really started out, they had choppers. All all cool clubs had choppers, but uh, Black Sabbath eventually uh, wanted to be racers, and it was a while before we went kind of went back to um, the, um, uh, the 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 chopper kind of bikes, and. When you went up to see these guys, they had these Harleys that were sick, crazy sick candy apple paint jobs and built motors before people even built motors. <laughs> and uh, they just they just looked so good. And a lot of the styling that I brought to the Black Sabbath as a national president came from watching those guys all those years. Like. Our, our patch used to be this little bitty patch, uh, about only like 10 inches. And they have a patch that took up their entire back. Those guys and the Flaming Knights uh, from the East Coast. And I always want... So when I got into a position that I could get a patch as big as our back, we, we changed our patch. You know, just following some of their styling. It was just always so cool. I was just absolutely amazed by him and his club. We had a badass clubhouse. Their clubhouse took up uh, an entire, like, city block. <laughs> it was a compound. So uh, we had the baddest-ass club in San Diego. They had, like, the baddest-ass club I'd ever seen. Just, um, uh, I just can't tell you how this motorcycle club fashioned and molded me. Even some of my riding style. Like, I remember this one guy when I went up there the first time. This one guy would ride his motorcycle, and when he would shift gears, he would kick his left foot way up in the air, like way almost over to his shoulders. It just so exaggerated. He'd switch gears and kick that leg way up over his left shoulder, and uh, boom, throw that leg up like he needed 
like his motorcycle needed to be shifted so hard he had to kick his leg up over his damn head. And when I saw that, <laughs> I left uh, Oakland kicking my leg up in the air. I have done that for the last 30 years, and that's where it came from. Anybody that's ever seen me, what the hell is Dragon doing? That's where that came from, you know. Flattery is imitation. Imitation is uh, flattery. Um, I remember the first time I went up there, and um, I knew I was in a tough ass neighborhood because when I first I first rode my motorcycle up there, I there was this this group of kids in a car, uh, young guys, and they were all <laughs> sitting on the roof with what looked like assault rifles. Now, this was early, so these weren't AR-15s, but these were these were kind of assault rifles. Each guy was sitting up on the uh, on the door, and the police were chasing them. But these guys weren't like they weren't running; they were kind of moving fast, kind of looking for a spot to to get down. And as I saw them pass me, my first instinct was, "Oh my God, I'm I'm gonna you know jump on the ground or something." And I looked around in the neighborhood. <laughs> And folks were just walking like nothing was happening. Like, oh, yeah, they chase people with sawed-off shotguns on the roof of the car every day. And I was like, woo, I know I'm in a tough neighborhood here. But they had the respect of the neighborhood based on the leadership of this man who wrote this incredible book. So let's talk about... Uh, the Golden State Warriors Victory Parade. The East Bay Dragons were featured in the 2015 Victory Parade through downtown Oakland, commemorating the 2015 NBA championship of the Golden State Warriors. Oakland rapper Richie Rich is a long-standing member of the East Bay Dragons and has uh, featured the club in many of his music videos. Their insignia is um, an incredible... Um, uh, an incredibly huge square patch featuring the club name and red text placed above the logo of a green dragon over a yellow background, kind of like a Chinese dragon. The two bottom patches displayed on their cuts show their territory. And they are uh, one is a rectangular patch with Oakland and in red text over a yellow background above another rectangular patch with California in red text over a yellow background. Uh, the East Bay Dragons colors are red and gold, like the Banditos, and the Flaming Knights, uh, which I had mentioned a few minutes ago. The club name is uh, prominently displayed in red text over a yellow background. However, the Dragons are not affiliated with either club in any way, uh, be it dominant MC or support MC, uh, and was founded many, many uh, uh, prior to both clubs, many years before those clubs. Uh, so now back in the day, oh man, I meant to get some video of this and I didn't back in the day, um, black motorcycle clubs were really, uh, kind of like drill. Uh, most motorcycle clubs were drill team clubs. So you guys have seen these old, old pictures of these motorcycles that would be riding together and then they all spin around and everybody would go through everybody and make all these kind of drill team circles, and you're like, man, I know they're going to wreck. I know they're, damn, they didn't wreck. Well, uh, that's what the kind of drill team motorcycle clubs were of the day. Until 1969, most black clubs were drill teams consisting of World War II veterans. These drill teams performed group routines consisting of stunts and challenging maneuvers, weaving in and out of cones and between other motorcyclists. Unlike uh, other African-American motorcycle clubs and drill teams of the late 1940s and 50s, which rode full dressers, the East Bay Dragons rode choppers. The thing about the chopper, the chopper was the styling, bro. They cut, you took everything off except what you needed. You had engine, steel, and chrome, and they were fast, baby. And you had to know how to ride them. <laughs> As a matter of fact, one of my members uh, had one in, in uh, Wichita, Kansas from, I don't know where the hell he built this thing from. And it was a suicide machine because as you drove it, it pulled to the right. <laughs> and as you shifted gears, it would wobble and pull to the right. So you were, you were fighting this thing the whole time not to run into the curb. And you had to know how to ride these things. 
Um, and uh, I, I, I don't know how this damn kid could ride this thing at 100 miles an hour. I mean, he just had a constant lean and pull. I rode that thing down the street and almost crashed it six times. Uh, so these guys had choppers. Expansion and growth. Since the inception of uh, an official establishing as a motorcycle club, the East Bay Dragons have had no desire to establish multiple charters inside or outside of California. They have only one chapter and have remained at the same clubhouse in East Oakland where they have been based for over 45 years. Um, let's see, unlike most motorcycle clubs, the East Bay Dragons do not have a prospect or probation period for prospective members. They believe you are either a member of the club or not. They don't have an in-between. Prospective members who are hangarounds are referred to by club members as rookies while they're being vetted for membership prior to being voted in as full patch members. So uh, this information uh, I got from uh, Wikipedia, which is, uh, uh, you know, you can read a lot more about them there. Um, I just, you know, I can't say enough what it was like to be around uh, this man. He just had an air of kindness about him and, and wisdom. And I was blessed as um, a young prospect to, to see uh, such a great man, such a great club, and such great people. When you, when you left Oakland, you had an idea of what you wanted to be based on uh, on how these guys got down. They they were OGs by the time I came in. Here's a before picture, or this is an after picture. Here's the before picture before they had this dragon uh, stuck in there. And this clubhouse, I mean, it it wraps this corner. It and for. Uh, their holidays, uh, they would block off that whole block down there, and they would be giving stuff to the kids. I'm talking about to the left side of the building. They would give stuff to the children, and they had kids out, and everybody's playing and having a great time in the parking lot. It was just absolutely amazing. So this man was, um, he, he was well-loved, well-respected respected by the top 1% of motorcycle clubs out there. Good friends with uh, with Barger, good friends with a lot of the folks out there that you've read about and heard about. You might not have heard about black motorcycle clubs and, and uh, how we get down, but believe me, they were well respected. You will find them uh, listed in the one percenter motorcycle uh, encyclopedia, motorcycle club encyclopedia, um, their their name is listed there. So uh, they weren't no they weren't no bullshit club. They're the real deal, and continue to be led by a man who was lifetime president. I just can't even imagine knowing what I know that it takes to be a president, I just can't even imagine um, how amazing the respect level had to be for, for this, this man to live his entire life um, as the founder and president and leader and spiritual leader and moral leader of his mighty motorcycle club nation. Just an incredible person. I absolutely recommend his book. And um, you probably can't get it right now. I, I, I think I saw it online for $400. Uh, so it's probably going to be a minute before uh, that book uh, is available. Soul on Bikes, the East Bay Dragon MC, and the Black Biker set by Toby Jean Levingston and uh, Keith and Kent Zimmerman. Now, I'll tell you something that happened. I was doing some research to do this video with and I, I needed a day uh, because um, it, it's really sad for me um, you, you know the founder of my motorcycle club is now 70 
72, 72. And I try to spend every day on the phone talking to him. And and he knew he knew the the East Play Dragons and you know he's you know the clubbers who took me there first. And I just would tell you that you guys give the OGs so much hell. But when they're gone, bro, ain't no getting them back. And they don't make them like these guys. They will never be like these guys. These guys are the pioneers. They are the ones that faced guns and being surrounded. And they if they didn't stand for who they were, you wouldn't be in the club today. So when you want to shut up old man or you're out of touch or you don't know what you're talking about, bro, you have no idea the hell they went through to keep it up and running. The passion, just as much passion as you have and you've been in the club about 16 days, they've had that same amount of passion for about 50 years. So if you feel passionate, step your young ass back and just imagine you don't, they got more, they got more passion in their pinky finger than you got in your whole body. They got more time backing up to a motorcycle clubhouse curb than you have riding forward. These men of the stature and the strength, the, the uh, Toby Dean Livingston's and Barger's and unfortunately, the father of the chosen few nation uh, left us a few years ago. Uh, these are these are men like the, oh my goodness, you just don't know. You just don't know. So I found this on the internet. Somebody had uh, put all these books together and said this was their weekend reading. And for my book to be laying next to this book. Uh, it, it, um, to, for my book to be laying anywhere near these books, because these people in our community and these clubs are huge for us. My, I, my book doesn't <laughs> deserve to be there. I, uh, I was blown away by that. So, you know, kind of emotional for me. Kind of uh, sad for me. Woo! So we hate to see them go, but we want to celebrate um, what, what great leaders they were. Uh, and legends. Men with heart and soul especially this one, Mr. Toby Dean Livingston. The heart and soul and the passion and the compassion built his club to keep his brothers off the streets. Kind of interesting. Wanted to do something uh, great that would last forever. Although I'm sure these guys never really thought about uh, what forever <laughs> would actually look like. They were just uh, trying to make something happen. And, and that's what they did. So that's what I would tell you guys to do. Work every day to do the best you can with um, what you have. And maybe you will be remembered someday too. From the national president of the Mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation, Ride or Die, he sends his sympathy and his greetings and uh, his best wishes to the Mighty East Bay Dragons Motorcycle Club Nation. And he wants you to know that his heart and soul are with you, brothers. And from Black Dragon Biker TV, the Black Dragon Biker News Network, thank you for giving us, at that time, young guys, 
something to look up to and to model and to try to be like as African American strong as brothers that nobody could break. Somebody said rest in power. Never heard that term before, but I absolutely love it. Okay. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it at that. That's my two cents. Please leave your two cents in the comments section below. Thanks for tuning in. See, when I had a problem at home, my bills I couldn't pay, or my money I couldn't, I didn't have no money to pay my bills with. And then I had a lot of problems with my kids or something that went on in my family that I couldn't solve. Then I got up on my damn motorcycle. And get skinny.